Hello, hello, everyone. My name is Marjorie Roman, and we have the pleasure to have, as always, the king of commercial real estate, Dolph the Roos. Thank hey you for again, coming. Hey, Marjorie. My pleasure. And today we're going to talk about um, what's going on right now in economy. We see that there's a recession and how it's affecting everyone. So first of all, what is a recession and how it affects all the population in general? Well, firstly, I want to comment that everyone's up in arms about this massive recession that we've got coming and this doom and gloom in the world as we know it is coming to an end. And yet for the last three years, we've had a run up in real estate prices that's averaged about 45%. And no one's talked about the tremendous run up and how, you know, values have gone up by nearly 50% in three years, Marjorie. That is phenomenal. But now that things have come off the the top of it, inflation's up, mortgage interest rates are up quite a lot. They're saying it's a recession. Soon they'll be talking about a depression. So let me explain mm -hmm. the difference between a recession and a depression. Mm -hmm. A recession is when someone you know has lost their job. And a depression is when you've lost your job. <laughs> no, I'm kind of kidding. But I don't know if we're headed into a recession. We're certainly mm -hmm. headed into a downturn. But I'm a contrarian. I always think that mm. things are never what they seem. And it could actually be tremendously beneficial that we're going to this period where there is a bit of a fall off in real estate prices, just as one consequence of the so-called recession. And let me explain that. So mortgage interest rates have come up quite a bit. They mm -hmm. used to be two and a half, three percent, roughly what we could get mortgages for. And now people are paying five, six, and even seven percent. Mm -hmm. So I hear that because of that, the cost of buying a home has gone up in terms of the monthly payment you have to make. It's gone up by a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars. So many people can't afford to buy real estate. And let's put a number on it, an imaginary number. Let's say there are 10 million people who without an increase in mortgage interest rates would have bought a property, but now with higher mortgage interest rates, mm. they can't buy a property. Mm. That means there are 10 million people not living in their own homes who would have been living in their own homes. Well, guess what? They're not all sleeping on park benches. They're living somewhere in a house. That means they're renting. That means there are 10 million more people renting than there would have been had interest rates stayed low, mm -hmm. which means the demand for rental accommodation is going to stay high. And that's why I don't think, despite the so-called recession, that rents are going to come down very much. Property values have come back a bit, but mm -hmm. I don't think they're going to go down by 45%. Mm -hmm. We've had this tremendous run-up, and then they're going to come back a bit, maybe 5 maybe 10%. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'll be wrong, but even if they come down 20%, that's still less than half the gain we've had in the last three years. Right. And people, of course, we've been writing all over the world in the newspapers and on commentary sessions on TV and everything, how there's this tremendous downturn and the world's mm. coming to an end. But it's just a 20% fallback, whereas rents will stay quite high. And why do I have confidence in saying this? Back in 2008, when we had the GFC or the so-called global financial crisis, we also had a situation where property values came down a lot. In fact, in Phoenix, mm -hmm. in some places, they came down 60%, which is oh, a wow. tremendous drop-off. And yet rents didn't come down nearly that much. Mm -hmm. And those people who managed to hang on to their properties, they saw that their rents dipped a little bit, but then the property values over five years, they came back up uh, basically to parity. And they've now almost doubled again since that peak before the GFC. So all you have to do is hang on for the long run and you'll be all right. Um, if you're forced to sell, that's going to be a problem, but that's where you don't want to have too much bad debt. That's true. And I feel like um, in the case of real estate, it's a long-term uh, game. You cannot expect to have all the many profits just right at the following day as you buy the house. You need to make sure that you let it sit for a second and let it simmer, I guess, on the market. Yeah. You so say you let it sit for a second. I think you mean figuratively. You mean let it sit for a decade. For a decade. There right. you go. Because I always say I cannot find a decade mm -hmm. looking through the history of property values in America where at the end of the decade, prices were lower than at the beginning. So whatever happens with dips and challenges and the oil crisis of 73, and the GFC and whatever else we had in 1982 and all those other, it goes back up. So mm -hmm. real estate and the economy doesn't go linearly and monotonically the way mathematicians would say. It goes in fits and starts. But each peak tends to be higher than the previous peak mm -hmm. and each trough tends to be higher than the previous trough. So set it out for the long haul, as you say. Set it out for a decade. That's right. It's a game for the patient, that's for sure. Yes. <laughs> or so the stubborn. Oh, yeah. There you we know, go. Just be stubborn and don't sell. <laughs> Lose the title to your property. I know that's hard to do electronically, mm -hmm. but just don't even think of selling. Because I'll tell you this, Marjorie, people yeah. who sell a piece of real estate tend to live long enough to regret it. Oh, wow. I hear a lot of people say, oh, my gosh, that house I sold in 1984 or 2016, if only I'd kept it, it would have been worth so much more now. Mm -hmm. But I've never heard someone say, phew, am I ever glad I sold that place? Yeah, the market's crashed. Mm -hmm. It's tumbled. Never. 
Mm -hmm. You'll often hear a couple at retirement saying, oh my gosh, our biggest asset is not that stamp collection that Uncle Peter told us would be worth a fortune <laughs> once or that classic car that we renovated that we thought would go up in value to $3 million. It's our house. And if only we'd bought a second one. If only we'd bought the neighbor's house. Remember, honey, when it was on the market and the grass was long, we said, why doesn't someone buy it? It's dragging down the value of the neighborhood. We should have bought it. That's true. Yeah. And I, I feel like most people, uh, they regret not getting into real estate, especially like during crises, as we're seeing right now. Um, that's the perfect time for you still to go and find exactly. your deal. Exactly. There's so many deals out there. It now you make matter. a good point. So yeah. even if there is a recession looming, I think it could be a good thing for most people because there'll be opportunities that we don't have when the market is strong. Mm -hmm. Like in the last three years, the market was so strong, it was going up so quickly. Mm -hmm. Houses would be put on the market. As you know, there'd be 20 offers submitted, cash offers for above the asking price on day one. How do you Ooh. compete in a market like that? And still the market kept chugging along. And by the way, mm -hmm. even though there's this recession looming at the moment, we still have a chronic housing shortage in this country. Mm -hmm. There's a chronic shortage of nearly 4 million homes oh. that need to be built to, to you know, fulfill the pent-up demand. So I don't think we're going to see a massive crash in property values at all. That is true. And, and instead of like saving your money under your mattress, why are you going to do that? It's just going to lose its value by all means putting into real estate so you can generate some extra income in the long run. Now, uh, what are some of the fears that you have seen um, with people that you teach um, about investing in times like this? What are some of the fears that they have shown and expressed to you as their, as their mentor? And how can they overcome those fears? Well, the fear is that they buy something for, say, $250,000. And by the end of the year, it'll only be worth two twenty, dollars mm -hmm. And by the middle of next year, it'll be worth one hundred and fifty. dollars That's the fear. That's why people hesitate. But if you wait long enough until you know that the market's on an upswing again, how will you time it? Because what if you're too late? What if by the time you think it's on the upswing, prices are back up to $300,000? And then you're competing against other bidders, mm -hmm. especially if you can buy something out, say two twenty thousand. I'm making mm -hmm. up these numbers. Even if it does go down a bit, what if your rental is such that you're cash flow positive? Mm -hmm. Why would you not do that? Get That's positive true. cash flow. You don't make a loss unless you sell it at a loss. So just ride it out, and eventually it might take one year, it might take three years. Things will swing around, and we'll be out of a recession, and things will be chugging along again. You know, two thousand and eight isn't that long ago. Um, but some people, when they were in the middle of 2008, they thought things would never recover. The prices had reached a new low and they would stay there forever. And they didn't buy. And, you know, that would have been the smartest time to buy, mm -hmm. especially with the benefit of hindsight. <clears throat> but we don't get hindsight in real estate. We can only look from today. Um, you know, we, well, we, we can't predict the future. So you just have to make a decision based on what you've seen happening as patterns. And one of the things that's kind of cool about when you clock up a few years is that you start to see patterns. And you start to see patterns with people's fears and, oh, no, there was a recession coming. We're doomed. We're going to lose my job. I'm going to have to get rid of this, get rid of that. And it usually doesn't end up being that bad. Mm -hmm. And the economy always tends to turn around. Now, this could be a exception. We could be headed in for a recession, and it's the end of the United States and, and the end of the Western world, and the other countries are going to take over, and we're all doomed. But then, you know, taking my advice wouldn't matter anyway, so... And you know what? It's interesting that you mentioned analyze the patterns throughout history when you're looking into a deal. Because um, that's actually one of the things that my realtor told me when I was... Um, looking at my very first property and it was right around the time of COVID and he mentioned well but like in the past there's been people that didn't want to keep their homes and they just sold it and it became a really good deal along the way so we're going to be looking for that and that's how I ended up getting my first property actually uh, it was people that they were scared of COVID and the pandemic and all the negative and uh, negativity that it was bringing <laughs> economically speaking that they didn't want to keep their house so they ended up selling it for a price that was not what they wanted Wanted, but they ended up just receiving the money because they wanted to get rid of that property. Oh my um, gosh, so they bought at the beginning of COVID? Uh, I, bu I bought this property at the beginning of but, COVID. Okay, well, and, you, so um, you did extra, you got that 45% rise effectively. Exactly. And the so, people who sold out of fear, they've missed out. For no them kidding. to get back in the market, that's going to cost them roughly 45% more. And I've seen my first property going all the way from, um, well, whatever the price was uh, when I bought it to almost double, if not more. Literally, the property that was right in front of it got sold for double 
of the price that it was supposed to be. How at. cool is that? So you never know how the history is going to help you, how all the market is going to change throughout the years, and it may be on your benefit. So why not taking the risk and instead of saving your money, just go ahead and look for an investment property right. or something that you can um, dump that money on, on that is right. going to generate that income. No, I fully around. agree. I so, fully agree. Um, what are some of the other ways, though, that we could um, prepare financially uh, when these uh, recession times or depression or any sort of economic issue may happen? Um, I don't know if you can prepare for it as such. You want to always organize your affairs so that you invest in assets that generate passive income. So they don't take much of your time, but they're just generating money. And for many people, that could be just owning five or ten homes. Because when you own that many, you've got surplus cash flow, you're paying down your mortgages. Mm -hmm. I say you, but it's really the tenant, of course, who's right. paying them down. And then when the recession comes, you're not going to sell because you know mm -hmm. that in the end it's going to go back up. So mm -hmm. Rents won't go down nearly as much as property values mm -hmm. go down. You've still got surplus cash flow from your rental income. What's there to do? I mean, you've prepared for the recession by owning your five or ten houses. Um, you know, I think keep an eye out. There'll be tremendous bargains. People are so over leveraged. They have so much debt that they end up selling things for bargain prices. That's true. Yeah. And so keep an eye out for more bargains. There'll be more people like the, the sellers of the house that you ended up buying mm -hmm. who say, oh, this is bad. We better get out of this market. You've got to be looking for those people. You've got to be looking. <laughs> so I would say every day go out and look at properties. I have this rule, the 100 10 3, one rule. You have to look at 100 properties, find 10 whether you're putting an offer in on. You put offers in on 10, 10 offers won't be accepted. If they are, you're offering too much. Maybe only three get accepted. You now have to try and finance three properties. Mm -hmm. Maybe only one works. You've looked at 100 properties to buy one. But that one could change your life. Oh, it does. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I tell you what, people tend not to own one investment property. I know many people who don't own any because they don't see the merits of it. But once people buy their first property and they see the benefits and merit of having surplus cash flow, they want to do it again and again and again. That's true. It gets addictive. So. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much, Dolph. And My thank pleasure. you to our audience. So there you have it. Don't waste your time just putting your dollars in your mattress. That's not going to work. Make sure that you find all the deals that are out there in the market. It doesn't matter what type of crisis it is. You're always going to find a really good deal if you're looking for it. And it could change your life. We're going to see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.